Recently, I had a comment on the video asking about uh, adjusting the maximum air pressure on my air compressor. So here we are today. I'm going to give you a, a explanation on how you can adjust the maximum air pressure on your air compressor. Um, this will work with a lot of air compressors, especially ones that's got this this pressure switch, the power switch that's mounted externally. Some air compressors you'll see that's more for homeowner use will have uh, the power switch built into the plastic housing that's around the pump and all. And they all, uh, I've had one of them before in the past and I had to remove all that plastic covering to get to the power switch and the pressure switch. Uh, some of them out there may not be adjustable. The one I had was, I just want to put that information out there, but the way you would adjust it, it's going to be the same way that I'm going to explain today. It's just you got to do a little more work to get to the, to the adjustment screw. I'm going to be trying to explain this the best I can to you, so please watch this video to the end. First of all, I want to start off with a couple disclaimers. First thing is, is safety. Number one, when you go to do any kind of adjustments to the uh, pressure switch and power switch, make sure you got the power disconnected to it, especially if you don't have experience working around electricity. Even though you have the power switch turned off, you still got live power going to the pressure switch. So you want to make sure you got power disconnected. If you're touch something in there you might shock yourself so I just want to put that out there make sure you got the uh, power cut off from it whether you unplug it from the wall or if it's hardwired in turning the, the circuit breaker off to that air compressor also too, doing this can void the warranty on your air compressor if it's still under warranty my personal suggestion is if it's under warranty don't touch it. Wait till the warranty's over with before you try to do anything like this. I'll show you in a minute, but they got ways of making it tamper-proof to where if you do adjust it, they can tell, and therefore it voids the warranty. Now, a lot of times you'll get an air compressor, and it may be rated for a maximum of 150 to 175 PSI. This one's rated for a maximum 175 PSI, but when I got it new, it only would pump up to 125 PSI. And so, they, they, they do this for a couple reasons. Number one, it's a safety thing. If they got the pressure set from the factory lower than what the compressor is rated for, then they don't have to worry about uh, the safety concerns of it going a couple PSI over. If it's rated for 150, you might want to adjust it to 140. That way, if heat rises or anything and the pressure rises a little bit, you got a little bit of lead way in there. Another reason why they may set the pressure lower than what it's rated for is, is for warranty reasons. If this compressor is not pumping up to its maximum capacity, it's working less. So therefore, there's a less likelihood of this compressor having a problem than if it was set from the factory at the maximum air pressure. That's another reason why they don't want you messing with it. They want to be able to get out of their warranty period before you have any problems with your air compressor. So it's mostly about business, but it is a safety concern too. So all that being said, let's get into it. After you've disconnected the electricity to your air compressor, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to, uh, decide on before you go any further is how high do you want your maximum air pressure to be at? Now, when I say that, I'm talking about the maximum air pressure this thing can pump up to. I'm not talking about the regulator. So I just want to put that out there too. Now, to know 
the maximum air pressure your compressor is rated for. There's a couple things you can look at. Usually, by the brand name, they're gonna put some sort of sticker on there that says it. A lot of times there'll be a label or something rated on the compressor pump itself. But what you mainly want to look at is a, the manufacturing label on the tank itself. Any tank that you buy is going to have some sort of official manufacturing label on it with the specs and all on it. So what we're going to look at on mine, we're going to come around here. And my manufacturing label is on the left hand side of my tank. This is where all the information is. It's got the manufacturing date and all that and as you can see on there it has a maximum PSI rating labeled on it. At maximum pressure I got 125 PSI on my compressor before it shuts off. I've decided that I want to set mine back up to 150 PSI. To me I like my compressors around that. This one's rated for 175, but 150 is all I need. That'll be less wear and tear on my compressor pump. These external pressure switches like this, they'll have some sort of case over it. We need to loosen up and remove this little Phillips head screw right here. Once you got that loosened up, just slide the cover off and to the side. And as you see in here, you got all your wire contacts in here. This is why it's important to have the power disconnected. Now, as for me, I'm used to working around this. It's not the safest in the world, but a lot of times I'll leave the power hooked up because I don't feel like disconnecting it. But you can see the safety concern here. Now, on this pressure switch, this is going to be the adjustment screw right here. On this particular pressure switch, it only has one adjustment screw. This adjustment screw will adjust both the cut in and the cut out maximum pressure. The cut in pressure is when you're using the compressor and it's not running, what pressure that this gets down to before the compressor turns on. So this screw and most of your prosumer grade compressors will have switches like this. Usually the cut in and cut out separated for at about between 25 and 35 PSI difference. With this one, if I got it set where it is now at 125 PSI, when I'm using it, it'll drop between 95 and 100 before the compressor turns on. That's my main reason why I want the pressure to be a little bit higher because when it gets down to around 100, sometimes that just isn't enough air pressure for me to do what I need to do. Now, earlier I talked about ways they make these tamper proof. This one, when I bought the compressor, this little Phillips head screw, adjustment screw, they had covered this screw in some sort of epoxy or silicone type material to where you could not stick a screwdriver in there and turn it. Therefore, I had to take a little, uh, like a dental pick and just pick that, that silicone epoxy out of there to where my screwdriver fits snugly in it. Now, once you do that, you've voided a warranty. If it had a warranty on it, it's over with now. Some of your other pressure switches may have an additional adjustment screw in the inside. What that, that second screw will do will adjust the air pressure range in between the cut in and cut out. It will adjust it like if you want it 20 PSI apart or 30 PSI apart. That's what that second screw would be for. You'll mainly see pressure switches like that on more uh, professional commercial grade compressors. This one's a prosumer grade compressor. It's kind of like uh, middle of the road in between homeowner 
and professional use. This may uh, vary depending on compressor to compressor of how much you got to turn this screw to raise the pressure. What I suggest is turn it a couple times. I'm going to give it a couple turns. One, one and a half, two, two and a half. I've turned this one about two and a half times. So what I'm going to do is, is turn the compressor back on. I'm going to put the cover back over this. Reconnect my power. And then turn this on. And then I'm going to bleed some air off of it using this uh, safety valve right here until the compressor turns off release it and I'm going to watch the air compressor build up and see where it cuts off at now. As you can see now, it built up to 145 PSI. So I'm just going to turn that screw by half a more turn and try that out. Also, when you're adjusting it and you're building the air pressure back up, stand by and watch this air pressure gauge as it builds up. If you've turned that screw in too much and you've reached the maximum air pressure that your compressor is rated for, switch it off right quick and let off a little bit on that uh, adjustment screw and try it again but you want to, when you're doing this you want to stay with it keep an eye on your air pressure and make sure you don't exceed the maximum air pressure of the unit As you can see, I'm right there close to 150. It's about 148. When the compressor first cut off, it was up to 150 and then it dropped off a couple PSI. That's pretty normal because as it's pumping, the air is heating up. And when the compressor quits putting in that hot air into the tank, then the pressure just starts dropping off just a tad bit and then it levels out so you want to make sure you're not t taking it over to where when it first cuts off you're not uh, going over that maximum rated pressure for your air compressor i'm happy where that's set at now so i'm going to go ahead and reinstall this screw on the cover and that's pretty much all there is to adjusting the maximum air pressure on one of these air compressors with the external pressure switch. Now like I, what I said at the beginning of the video, if your pre pressure switch is in case with all the plastic housing around the pump and all, then you may have to take that plastic off to be able to reach it. Before you go through all that trouble, you just may want to take the uh, make and model of your air compressor and uh, run a Google search and see if it has an adjustable pressure switch inside all that plastic housing because some of the real cheap units may not. Just another example to look at. This is an older Craftsman 30 gallon air compressor I have and it too has an external pressure switch on it. And if I take this cover off you can see there, there's my adjustment screw right there. 
on this one you have to have one of them security torx bits to be able to adjust it so keep that in mind if you got an air compressor and you're not sure what kind of screw heads under here you may just want to pull the cover off and take a look that way if you don't have the appropriate tool you can acquire it so that's pretty much all there is to adjusting one of these pressure switches on one of these air compressors it's not that hard just work safe and use your brain you'll be okay I think everybody can handle this if you liked it give it a thumbs up comment down below and subscribe to the channel thank you for watching